Hello and welcome to the Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem podcast, everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sponsored by, yeah. Which eventually we'll have to check to see if there's actually a company called Yeah. That would be great. And if Memphis isn't running it, I don't want it. <laughs> As you guys can hear, our wonderful Chaotically is back with us this week yes and it is also the start of our october special monster mashes yes uh yes chaotically has been lovely enough to pick out four topics for the month yes and then we're also having our coming up soon our 69 Episode or episode sixty nine special for passing episode sixty nine. Mm-hmm. The I'm not sure what we're calling it really right now. Where we shall be playing Smash or Pass Monster Edition, as we kind of mentioned in the last episode a little bit. Our wonderful contestants are going to be chaotically yes, straying bats who yes. was in Ghostface episode. Loki, who was with Baviega, and Phantom Songbird, who was on last episode as well as the episode with the Banshee. I'm currently making a list for them all. Mm-hmm. More about that at the end of the episode. <laughs> so, we are starting off this October special mm-hmm. with a certain man. A with certain, a certain man. With a certain slim figure. Okay, bud. I see you. One one might even call him the real Slim Shady. <laughs> not Slim Shady. That is not his name. <laughs> what is his name then, Chaotic? Um, It would be Slender Man, not the real Slim Shady. Please don't call him Slim Shady. It's unknown what happens to you when you do that. <laughs> if you don't hear from me after this episode, you know he doesn't like it. You know he doesn't like it. Have you mm-hmm. delved? Into the Slenderman lore much? Some. Um, I used to read it a lot, actually, as a teenager. I was super interested in the the, uh, creepypasta. Mm -hmm. Um, But I haven't, like... There's a lot of new lore. Like, they've been adding on to it progressively through the years, so... I feel like I've known you since uh, about the same time you've known Slenderman. Uh, That's probably very likely. Because Slenderman came out in 2009... I was going to say About, 29. Was, I knew him a year before I knew you. Ah, he's an older friend. <laughs> well, since you know some of the lore, just mm-hmm. a quick warning to our listeners then. The more you learn about Slenderman, they say the more likely he is able to show up to you. Yes. Or show himself to you. Yes. So if you would like to take that chance, please keep on listening. Yes. Hey, would you like to kick us off with the lore you know, Chaotic? Um, he lives in the woods. Um, he mostly only shows up in pictures. Um, he lures you in. He's got like, he's like got no face, you know. He's just a man in a suit. Lots of like tentacles kind of looking things. Like tendrils, like little hands. Um, they come out of his back. Some lords, some pictures he's got like teeth, others he does not. Um, and he just kind of like lures you in, as far as I'm aware, and then like and eats you and or takes your soul and or makes you mentally insane. It depends on the lore you read. That's like the basics that I know. And that was from like, like we said, like 2009. Yeah, that's uh, that coincides with a lot of the stuff I've seen as well. Yeah, that that seems to be like the basics. Well. Like I kind of mentioned earlier, mm-hmm. Slenderman was first created in 2009. And it was thanks to the internet. Mm-hmm. Yep, internet. Doobie just out here throwing some creepypastas. Mm-hmm. 
and it was on the Something Awful Internet Forum, where they were holding a Photoshop contest where people were challenged to create paranormal images. And should I say the guy's actual name? I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. I wouldn't. <laughs> there was a user by the name, by the pseudonym, Victor Surge. He contributed two black and white images of groups of children. And in these children, in these photos, not children. <laughs> All right. <laughs> in these photos of children, mm-hmm. he had made a spectral figure wearing a black suit mm-hmm. who was very tall and thin standing behind them. And... He went above the kind of specs of the contest, and he also sent along a couple quotes like they were from the photographers. Mm -hmm. The first quote on the photo said, we didn't want to go. We didn't want to kill them. But it's persistent silence and outstretched arms horrified and comforted us at the same time. Mm -hmm. And the other one, Stated, one of two recovered photographs from the Sterling City Library blaze, notable for being taken the day that 14 children vanished, and for what it referred to as the Slender Man, deformities cited as film defects by officials. Fire at the library occurred one week later. Actual photographs confiscated as evidence. Those were his two entries that he posted for this contest. And from there, it kind of, the Slenderman kind of just grew underneath this form as people started making more and more of their own lore. Mm-hmm. And they all started to get certain things that the Slenderman had to do for their lore-wise. And eventually then it grew and to became a creepypasta. And pretty much everybody known of the Slenderman. Like you said, all his powers he contained. The big thing with the Slenderman, one of the things is how he kills. Nobody knows if he kills you or just takes you away. Everything happens off screen. They never, sh- you never have any gore associated with the Slender Man. Is always just a mystery of him taking you. Mm. Uh, some more of Slender Man's powers to kind of go along with what you post, you said earlier, is he has an ability to teleport. He it, he can cause slender sickness, is what they call it, which is when people's uh, gets rapid onset paranoia, nightmares, delusions, usually accompanied by nosebleeds. His uh, appearance can change from story to story. Uh, but like you said, it's usually tall, slender man, usually tentacle appendages out of his back, extra tentacles on his arms, finger tentacles, wearing a suit, or his skin is suit shaped, mm-hmm. all white skin or appendage features. Some also say that his face appears differently to everybody that sees him. Mm-hmm. That's kind of all I have information wise about Slenderman. I got a couple, you know, media things because he was in the media quite a bit back in 2014. It's good, uh, good to know. Are you ready to sweep move on to media? Yes. Starting off in media, he was just, he was in like creepy pastas. Mm-hmm. He has two video games. Mm-hmm. He has a Slenderman movie. Right. There's plenty of podcasts about him, YouTube videos. The two most notable things is that he was in the actual news media. Oh. Due to a very bad incident. <gasps> Are you talking about the kids? The kids. 
Oh, I knew it. I was like, hmm, what has he ever been in of a news article? And then I was like, oh, it was those girls. Mm -hmm. I forgot. I am not going to say their names. Nope. We will keep that confidential. But it so happened, just a short summary of it, it involves three 12-year-old girls, two of which planned out and ended up stabbing their one friend in the woods because they were, I'm not sure if obsessed is the right word, probably not, but they were totally believed Slenderman was real and they were trying to become one of Slenderman's proxies and get in to be able to join the Slenderman. I don't remember if the girl, the third girl survived. I know she was found by a bicyclist mm -hmm. after, after she got stabbed 19 times, she managed to crawl out of the woods to be found and then taken to the hospital later, I believe. Mm -hmm. I do believe she did survive. I okay. Believe. But the other girls got caught five miles down the road covered in blood. Yes. At a antique store. Antique store, I believe. It was some sort of, it was some sort of store. They got caught at with the knife on them. But this incident ran across all cable TV news across the uh, U.S. Mm -hmm. It went so far that even the creator, Victor Surge, made, an out made a statement mm -hmm. saying that Slenderman is not real. Saying, along with the websites that had it, like Creepypasta. And uh, they also made a statement saying that he was indeed not real. And uh, Slenderman's main victims or target demographic is children. I forgot to add that little tidbit. Oh, we love that. It's possible that it was his main target because of their curiosity. They want to mm -hmm. learn more about him, which makes them more target targeted. Right, susceptible minds. Mm -hmm. They're wanting to sponge. Yeah. Another fun fact, Slenderman is not in public domain. Oh, yeah? Mm-hmm. He is still owned by Victor Surge and a possible second person who is anonymous at this, mm. anonymous at this time. And they are very selective of who they give the rights to to do video games and movies. Mm. That's why there has not been a bajillion of them. That's good to know. Mm. They I won't. always wondered because like, it's such a cool story. Like People could totally capitalize on it, you know? Yeah. They want to keep the Slenderman image true to itself. They don't want like movie writers and stuff to change it a whole bunch. I get I think they're okay with all the forum stuff like on creepypasta and all that that type of stuff. Mm hmm Yeah, there's like I said, I've I've wanted him to have a movie of his own for like a long time, like a decent one. And it's mm -hmm. just nobody like they can't get the rights and or it's just a hard story to tell like nobody does it justice because it really is such an eerie eerie story yeah. i think the slender man movie came out in 2018 but i have not seen it and i heard it's only got like a 3.5 percent on rotten tomatoes yeah well we can't listen to rotten tomatoes rotten tomatoes doesn't always know what it's talking about it tends yeah. to be a but but um it's it's okay. It it was it wasn't what I wanted it to be, for sure. Was it just different? It was like it it wasn't even focused like on Slenderman. It was more focused on the girls, which mm. you know is like it's whatever. Like that's also a tragedy. But I want to know. I want him to be a whole entity for the movie. You know, like he needs to be terrifying because that's what he is. So was the movie more closely related to the like the stabbings before um not or was it more really. of a slenderman it, so it was like in the beginning like they watched the 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 clip like the dark web clip and that's how they got knowledge of him obviously so he was more um apt to appear for um for them um so in that sense it was really neat but it wasn't like the stabbings necessarily they went out in the woods and he kind of like essentially like erased their minds and kind of made them like lobotomized he made them his proxies mm -hmm. pretty much pretty much um it just there just wasn't a lot to it like after he did that there wasn't like 
any crazy repercussions or like, you know, it was just, it was just, it was just not, it wasn't as eventful as I wanted it to be. And it was a really slow, it was really slow to get to the point. Yeah. You think with a Slenderman movie, you can make it just as exciting as some of the actual stories written. Some of the shorter stories on the forums. Or there was a successful YouTube channel Mm -hmm. that it's called Marvel or Marble, 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 (laughs) Marble, Marble Hornets. And it follows a film, like a film student, I believe. And Mm -hmm. through his encounters with the Slenderman and the Slenderman's friends and all sorts of spooky encounters. I have not watched it, but... Most of his videos have a million views, and he has half a million followers on YouTube. Mm-hmm. It's supposed to be really good for from what I heard. It must be. Oh, there is also a way, I just remembered, there is also a way to summon the Slenderman, if you wish to do so. Oh, yeah? Would you like to know how? Mm-hmm. You draw a circle, then you put an X through it. You draw a circle and you what? Put an X through it. Put an X through it? Yeah. And that's supposed to draw the Slenderman's attention towards you. Okay. And this was also brought about through Marble Hornets storytelling. That's where a lot of the lore came from. I'm ready for Mayhem now, if you are. Mayhem, yeah. Um, I'm interested to know where you think he places in our high school or in our college. Student, let's see, how I'd place Slenderman. I also really love that we just kind of made a school of heathens. <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> I think he'd be less heathen-y. I think he'd be the quiet kid as he can't talk or speak. And if you look more into him is when he actually starts to notice you. I could see that. I see it. I'm kind of picturing like, and you're going to laugh because it was us, but like the art nerds, you know, they're real quiet. Yeah. Kind of sitting in the background, drawing everybody. I can see that. Yeah. Maybe that's where he takes his victims, just art class. <laughs> oh, that reminds me. I've seen, I heard, seen recently that Slenderman is making more of a comeback again. But yeah. instead of being malevolent, he is benevolent. Oh. To an extent of Deadpool. To the extent of Deadpool, huh? As he's kind of an anti-hero in some of his uh, stories. Because he has a daughter now. Mm Mm-hmm. And it was Sally something. The stories that make Slenderman benevolent usually end up being him punishing children who are bullies to the extreme. Oh, that's neat, though. I kind of like that. It's a kind of an anti-hero-ish telling that I've seen is kind of starting to gain more traction, but it's still fairly new. Yeah. If Slenderman came to actual reality, how much mayhem do you think he'll cause in the modern day society? I, if he was like real, real, probably a lot. There's a lot of people who like to learn about this stuff. It would be um it would be all too easy, especially for somebody like me, <laughs> to just like fall into wanting to like learn more, I guess. Mm-hmm. I'm always so interested in stuff like that, like I don't know. You know how many people would accidentally summon him? Oh, for sure. Just a circle with an X through it. Would it count if you make a like making targets on uh, cardboard boxes and stuff where you a circle and X and he's like, oops, I accidentally summoned him. Yep. A total accident. Do you think there'd be more than one of him? Uh, I see? would, I don't think so. I think there has to be one Slenderman. You, you think he's I mean? more of a specific creature, not a, like a race? I, yeah, I think it's a specific entity. That's a better phrasing than what I said. Yeah, I, I would agree. I would think, I don't know hope that there was only one Slenderman entity. Yeah. Maybe then you'll be lower on the queue. Do you think he has a queue? 
Does he keep a notebook? I bet he does. Well, the video game, he has uh, pages. Or is that about him? Or does he write those? I don't know. I hope anybody listening to this does not get visited by Slenderman. Since yeah, we share your knowledge. You know, and, you know, we didn't like go over because there's a lot. There's a lot of lore. So we mm-hmm. didn't go like too far over. You guys should be fine. If you do meet him, tell him I said, yo, what up? Okay, thanks. Mm, maybe try and get an autograph first before he Correct. takes you. Yeah, please. Yeah, please get an Or maybe even after he takes you, take just straight up autograph. That'd be great. Yeah. I wonder if cell phones work in the Slenderman dimension, where he takes know. you. There was a, uh, in Marvel Hornets, I seen Marvel Hornets. Not Marvel, not Disney. Don't come after us. <laughs> Slenderman has his own mansion. The Slender Mansion. <laughs> where him and all his. <laughs> the Slender Mansion. Where him and all his friends live in proxies. Mm hmm. But yeah, maybe you just get taken there. And it's like uh, Bowser's Mansion or Luigi's Mansion. <laughs> Imagine you're getting stolen as a princess constantly, but instead of Bowser, it's Slenderman. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Mario, your princess is in another castle. Not a castle, a mansion. <laughs> in the uh, woods. The Slender Mansion. You know, I don't think Mario would be surprised at this point, I'm going to be honest. No. Anyways, anything else to add mayhem-wise? <sighs> I don't think so. I think the mayhem speaks for itself. I guess we shall move on to our Patreon shoutouts. Yes. Our patrons of Mondi Ruby Mage. Sticking with us. They're magical for sticking with us. Chaotic any news? We didn't have any chaotic news last time, but maybe this time? We do not have any chaotic news. Chaotic is on a break at the moment because life is dramatic. So, you know, there's that. So, to continue our announcements from earlier, we shall be live streaming over on the Monsters, Myths, and Mayhem YouTube channel, or at least going to try to, the Monster Smasher Pass, on October 5th, at a time to be announced on Twitter. Yes. I believe it'll probably be later in the evening. We'll get back with you guys on time-wise. We'll just keep, we'll keep everybody updated Twitter and Discord-wise. Well, that is everything. Chaotic, right. would you like to do the outro? Yep, give me two seconds. Thank you for listening to the Monsters, Miss and Mayhem podcast. Silver and Chaotic take you into the depth of the lore and discuss how these legends could affect modern day society. You can find us on you Apple find Podcasts, us on Apple Podcasts Spotify. <laughs> Spotify, iHeartRadio, or almost any podcast service easiest to you. Dive into the depths of chaos with us every Wednesday, bar silver and chaotic not missing their scheduling, and consider joining the podcast Discord or Twitter following even more insider looks and even some D&D sessions. <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you'd like some extra special inside looks or even want to be a guest on the show, consider helping us via Patreon. Your help makes such a big difference to us both. Until next time, <laughs> Mythics, you never know what kind of mayhem we might get into. And from Bird, Peanut Butter. Peanut Butter.